Do you want your respondents to sign your SurveyJS forms? Let me show you how. Hi there, welcome to SurveyJS. This is Elena and today I'm going to show you how to create a simple consent form for processing personal data that has the main text body, a few consent boxes, text boxes for personal details and a field for electronic signature that makes it super easy for respondents to sign it with their mouse pointer or even with a finger if they're using um, a touch enabled devices. Plus, you will learn some other built-in ways how to accept signatures using SurveyJS forms by enabling respondents to upload pre-generated signature files to a file upload field. So I'm currently in a free demo of SurveyJS Creator. Uh, you can find and try out this demo at surveyjs.io. And I'm going to start by adding an HTML uh, element to my form. Let's name it the consent, the consent form for processing personal data. So an HTML element allows you to add any form to your, any text to your form and then uh, edit it using HTML markup. And as Survey Creator reads the input of this field as an HTML document, there is no need to declare a new one. You can simply enclose text um, with a paragraph text tag and then um, use some inline CSS properties for any text styling. So I'm going to paste the main text body uh, for the consent form into this field. And before moving on to the next question, let's set up a theme for our form and define its width. For this, um, I'm gonna uh, switch to the themes tab and um, select one of the predefined form themes. I'm gonna choose uh, double border. In order to define the form width, we need to switch back to the designer tab and under general, set the width mode to static and enter a specific width value, for example, 800 pixels. So the next step is to add the consent boxes. For this, a simple check boxes will do. Um, we only need to hide the question title and uh, also reduce the number of items to two. Let's do that. And as I want our respondents to give consent for both statements, I need to set a minimum number of selected choices to two. So this way, when a user um, ticks only one box, an error message will pop up saying that the consent is required for both statements. So let's select our question and under choices, let's um, enter two. Okay, great. So the next question is to collect respondent details and to avoid adding several single line inputs, I'm going to add a multiple check boxes and assign values for each field. So let's um, assign a title. So it's full name. Uh, then the next field is company. And I need one more for date. And I'm going to uh, change the input type here as well. Okay, great. I'm just going to quickly um, hide question numbers because I don't really need them. Uh, for this particular form. And the final question I'm adding to this form is the signature pad. Let's take a look at some of the settings that are available for this question type. So besides assigning a title and subtitle, we can also set the visibility and make uh, make the question read only or required. And the signature width and height properties, they said that it mentions of the signature area as it's displayed to respondents and also um, the mentions of the, uh, the size of the resulting image, so you can see here. Um, you can also select the storage format for the image using this drop-down menu. 
Uh, as you can see, the default values for the width and height are 300 and 200 pixels. And as we enable the auto scale uh, signature area setting, then the signature area will fill all the available space within the question box and maintain um, the default 3 to 2 aspect ratio. And as the signature pad enables you to upload uh, an image using the background image setting, you can use it to collect images of defected or damaged products um, that can be annotated uh, with notes and drawings to highlight the issue. You can also enable a placeholder within the signature pad area and customize the text um, uh, to provide users with instructions and guidance. And um, in case you use the signature field for its original purpose, then instead of adding a background image, you can change its color as well as the color of the stroke to better suit your preferences or requirements if you have any. Now let's see how our form will look to users. Um, I'm just gonna add a few tweaks in the header. I wanna make the height of the header um, a bit lower and also I want to change the density of the title font and um, yeah let's also change the uh, text uh, for the complete button I want to change it to submit yeah and that's it our form is ready If you prefer to collect pre-generated uh, signature files, instead of adding a signature pad, we're going to add a file plot question to our form and also an HTML element that will serve as a helper text um, containing um, a URL for a third-party signature generation platform. So we've added an HTML. Now let's add a signature, uh, or a, a, sorry, a file upload question. Let's hide its title. Uh, now let's get back to our HTML. We need to paste some uh, text containing uh, a link. Uh, I'm just gonna customize the placeholder text a bit and um, maybe change the, the theme uh, to a different one. Uh, let's go to the themes tab. And this time select, for example, layered. Okay, looks good. Um, some tweaks in the header again. Yeah, now it's ready. And um, let's do the form and test it. So we first uh, upload a file that I already have. Okay, great. Now then, uh, let's delete it and then uh, let's use the link. And now let's go back to our form and upload the file to the file upload field. And that's how it's done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.